All right, today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up a CA Technologies pressure pot. Um, with this example, I have a dual regulator set up and I'm just gonna be going through the whole process of correctly setting up your pressure pot, um, your fluid and air pressure, and how to get it set to your gun. Um, it's all gonna be pretty straightforward, hopefully help you guys out. Uh, in case you're having some problems with uh, spray patterns or how things are coming out, maybe refer to this video as a good starting point. Um, so uh, the first thing you want to do is I opened it up and I pulled out these accessories that were in the pot. It's just some casters and instructions. I'm just going to put that to the side for now. Um, and what I've already done that I didn't include in the video is I put some Teflon on these dual regulators and I've already kind of installed them here. Um, when you get it out of the box, if they're not pre-installed, you have to screw them in yourself. So I've already done that. Um, the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to put uh, this plug here just so I can start uh, pressurizing my pot. So just bear with me here. That's what I've done there pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some material into my pot. Um, today I'm just using a little bit of water because this is just for example purposes. Um, obviously water is extremely thin, um, you know, your thicker materials will might be increasing pressure a little bit. Got about a gallon, gallon and a half of water in there. Obviously, we're going to want to snug these down nice and tight. One good thing about these CA pressure pots is uh, how smooth these threads are. And it just kind of spins right on. All right. I've snugged up nice. I've got my material in the pot. Um, I got both my regulators backed all the way off at this point. I'm almost ready to uh, add pressure, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and hook up my fluid and air lines to both my pressure pot and my gun. Um, you know, one thing I like to mention is uh, Teflon everything. Okay, snugged up nicely, ready to go. Let's add some pressure to the pot. All right, now that my gun's all set up, uh, air and food's all plugged in, we can go ahead and um, connect the compressor to the pressure pot. As you can see, nothing's really changed because both of these are backed off, uh, that it's the right thing that I want there. So um, the first thing we want to do is set our fluid pressure. One important concept I want to go over, if I haven't already, is that my fluid pressure always has to be less than my air pressure. Um, the reason for that concept is I'm just going to show you here. Here's my fluid and here's my air. Right? So if my fluid pressure is higher than my air pressure coming in, what's gonna happen is the fluid, because it's at a higher pressure, is gonna overpower the air and actually go back into my gun instead of out of uh, the needle nozzle, which is what we want it to do. And why it's very important that your air pressure always has to overpower your fluid pressure. If not, you're gonna run into a real bad situation. And um, that's just a real basic concept of why it's important that this is always set to a lower pressure, lower fluid pressure, higher air pressure. So let's talk about setting our fluid pressure. So where do we set our fluid pressure? Uh, one of the main things and something I always like to say to people is you really don't even have to look at this number. 
the number that you see here on your fluid pressure is not going to be extremely important when you're first setting up and in reality you should be setting up your fluid pressure uh, the way I'm about to describe pretty much every day um, because uh, atmospheric pressure changes daily as low and high systems and weather changes or let's say you're a mobile guy and um, you're going from the beach to the mountains or you know you're you know where you're going is going to change atmospheric pressure in the world also and one good reason why you want to set this up daily so what I have here and this is the way I like to do it is I have an 18 inch ruler and what I want to check is how far at zero air pressure because my air pressure is at zero how far my fluid pressure is going to push uh, my fluid out of the line so right now as I pull the trigger now uh, obviously I have no fluid pressure and that's what's happening and um, what I want is an 18 to 24 inch stream coming out before it, you know and then it have it drop off you know anywhere from 18 to 24 inches is pretty much the sweet spot you're looking at once you have that then we'll set our air pressure um, once I just want to reiterate that right now I'm doing this with water water is extremely thin so in this example I'm gonna be at really low fluid pressure when you're working with an actual paint or a material lacquer oil um, you know it's gonna have much more body so you know you'll see the drop-off happen a little faster than with water but it's still a valid example so like I said I'm looking for about 18 inches and I'm just gonna slowly increase uh, my fluid pressure here um, until I get that stream I'm looking for and as you can see with water I mean I am at an unmeasurable amount of PSI because it's such a no body to it but if you see there I'm getting that 18 inches it's coming out to about 20 inches and then it's dropping off right there just based off of what I'm seeing here I know my fluid pressure is correct like I said I don't have to look at this regulator I don't have to look at this gauge all that I really need to understand is what's happening here how my fluid is coming out of my gun and where the drop-off is I'm measuring 18 inches realistically I'm going to about 20 22 and then I'm seeing a drop-off um, that's what I want I'm really happy with my fluid pressure right now so now let's talk about air pressure my fluid pressure set up and I want to reiterate what I just did that fluid pressure test you want to do that daily every day um, now that my fluid pressure is set up, I want to set my air pressure. Um, looking at the air cap, it's telling me 29 PSI right there. So I know what the gun wants to be at, at the head. Um, you know, I need to get 29 coming into the gun. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and slowly turn this up here. Nice and slow, let it settle. I'm about out 20. And right there I'm about 30. But I wanna keep in mind, this is 30 PSI here. And I need to get 30 PSI here. And there is drag in this 25 foot of line. 25 is not extremely long, so we're not gonna get a whole lot of drag um, but just to give you an example of what's about to happen as I pull the trigger and you watch the gauge You see my working pressure. I'm down to 20 as I hold the trigger What I really want is while I'm holding the trigger to be getting that 29 psi at my gun. So I'm gonna crank it up about 10 more psi here I'm at 40 psi and as I pull the trigger I'm right at 30 that's where I want to be. If you're noticing that your spike is more than 10 PSI, um, most likely, uh, if your spike is more than 10 PSI, you most likely need to upgrade um, the width, you know, these hoses. I want to say I'm running 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths. If your spike is higher than that, you want a more diameter on your hose on your uh, air hose, especially leaving your compressor, because you really don't want that spike to be more than 10. 
If the spike is more than 10, what you'll get is you'll get a burst every time you pull the trigger because of that extra pressure. Um, but how I have it set up, we have a 10 PSI spike, that's right. If you come over here and look at my spray pattern, um, it's really beautiful. You know, uh, that's where you want it. You know, um, there's no big bubbles in the middle there. It's a nice fine mist and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Let's just say, for example, I uh, crank up my fluid pressure because I didn't do my 18 inch to 24 inch uh, fluid test. So now I'm up to uh, I'm up to 18 psi on my fluid. Still at 40 here in my air, so my fluid is still less than my air pressure, which is correct. But what's going to happen to my spray pattern? I'm starting to see some water drops in the center there. Might be hard to see in the video. Let me crank it up more. Now, I can really see water drops there. You know, so if you're seeing your water drops in the center of your pattern, you have way too much fluid pressure. Let's crank that back down. You know, and um, I'm actually got to relieve the pressure pot just to get my pressure back. This is a dump valve back here. Uh, what I did is I just dumped all my pressure. And uh, it's a good safe way to dump your pressure. And uh, you see there, now that I've relieved the pressure, I'm getting that really good spray pattern again. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to set up your pressure pot, your regulators, and your gun, and um, how you're gonna set up your fluid and air to make sure that you're getting not only the spray pattern you're looking for, but the correct atomization and finish so that you don't have to uh, go back and forth constantly trying to figure out what's going on. This is how we do it here at Chain Equipment.